on Comcast Sportsnet. Another great crowd here at the Woburn Bowling Room. Glad you're with us. John Holt, Dan Murphy, Trina Fernandez, more great Candleton Bowling on tap, Dan. And Phil Clough returns as the champ this That's week. right. Uh, since we had Jeff win nine in a row, we've had one and gone. So Phil's going to try to break that streak and win his second one today. We'll uh, speak with Phil uh, momentarily. But first, we say hello to Trina, standing by with the challengers. Trina. Hi, John. Thanks a lot. Well, our challengers today are Mike Poulin and Steve Vadney. Mike, we haven't seen you in a while. It's been, what, four years? Yeah, since the past Super Bowl. Last post Super Bowl. Yeah. I was due to come back. Due to come back, but you had a triple strike the last time you were here. Welcome back to the Candlefin Challenge here on Comcast Sportsnet. And we are just about ready for the challengers match this week. Mike Poulin and Steve Vadney. Winner advances to take on Phil Clough. This is a, a one-game challengers match. That's the way we do it, just one string. So we've got to get it done and uh, pretty quickly. Mike to go first. Southpaw from New Hampshire. Wow, that's a quick start. No doubt about that one. First ball down and all the butterflies fly away and everything when you throw that first mark. In this instance, it's the strike. They look to build on that lane 36. And Mike is no stranger to strikes. Back in 2004, he took a part of that triple strike pool home with him. In fact, there's a story within the story. He was on and bowled against Det Klein. Det Klein threw a triple strike against Mike to beat him. Mike later comes back on the show and throws a triple strike himself to take some of that money out of Det mm. Klein's pocket. <laughs> so long memory in that case total of eight on the fill nine in the box so a solid start for Mike following that strike to open up with he's at 27 take a look at the very good Candlefin bowler and Steve Vadney back with us he's been a regular and uh, quite accomplished he's the uh, right hander Lefty versus the righty in this showdown. It is almost going to start with a strike as well. Of course, uh, Steve was on with us not too long ago. From Claremont, New Hampshire. That's right. He is one of the victims in Jeff Surrett's streak of nine wins. He lost to Jeff, uh, Jeff back in uh, the 10th of January. 264 to 231. Second ball for Steve. Picks up the spare. So each bowler with a mark in that first frame. Remember any combination of three marks, strikes or spares in a row is $50. $50 additional for everyone in that streak in the same game. And of course the triple strike uh, is $1,000 out that split by the number of people who accomplished that throughout the season. Eight on the fill. He matches the fill that Mike Poulin had on his strike, and he leaves himself the two and the five, trying to go two marks in all. Looks like he's got a nice little guy to the left. Well, not that nice. Can't get the kingpin. I think he was thinking the same way I was. If he's going to miss it to the left, he got that wood angle just, just right into the two, and then finally the five, but it went right by the five. One pin advantage early on for Steve as he gets a 10 box, 28 to 27. Back to Mike Poulin. Had a strike on this lane his first time. Can't match it. Pull the ball to the right this time. Dropped three. Almost converts that for another mark. Leaves the five. Later on in the show, we'll give you a website that you can uh, write to us, those people who are watching on different networks. We'd love to know where you're watching it and, and what uh, medium you use to watch the show, Sportsnet. So we'll give you that uh, website later on. But I would like to say hello to a familiar name, Pete Surrett in Bradenton, Florida. He watches the show on DirecTV at Cherry's Bar and Grill in Bradenton, Florida. Have one for us, Pete. <laughs> Pete Surrett is the, 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 the uncle of 
none other than Jeff. That's terrific that he yeah. can watch now uh, via DirecTV on Comcast right. Sportsnet. We've certainly expanded our exposure and our viewership. And we want to hear from you on the Comcast Network as well. Great to have you with us. Of course, Trina says to say hello to everybody at Cherry's Bar and Grill. I don't know what that's all about, but, <laughs> but she said to make sure that she says hello, hello to everybody down there in Florida. Well, she is a Florida girl. That's so, right. Uh, yeah. Two tens for Mike. He gets to 47 through four boxes. Steve with an average of 122. Of course, Pete Soret was a pretty fair bowler in his own right, as well as his brother Tom, which was Jeff's father. Uh, so it's in the genes in that family, I guess. Ah, oh, there's a strike for Steve Adney in the third. Steve's got a bunch of buddies here, too, comprising his uh, rooting section. He's rather vocal. Glad to hear them. Moves over to frame four, already with two marks. Spear, now a strike. Missing the head pin, but the head pin was the last pin to go down, and now he leaves himself to 7-10. Let's see where this wood settles down. Could use that wood and have the ball take out the 10 pin off the wood and have the wood take the 7. Uh, got the seven left. To, they got the ten left to seven. He increases his lead to ten pins. And a ten box. Well, I guess he put the wood in the channel on that last ball, so it's nine box 56 so to 47 so his leads at nine back to the lefty one two and ten left for mike piece of wood in front of the ten catches the head pin got a good chance of converting this for a spare miss to the left His ball wants to break a little bit left to right. That time he lofted the ball further out on the lane, so it had less time to start breaking for him like that one did, and consequently left it to the left. Gets to 57 halfway through. Started with that strike, and now he's been open the next four frames. Won't be open strike. on this one. Now he's had one in each lane. Lane 35 and now in lane 36. Back to Steve, his fifth box. Opposite an open frame from Mike here in the fifth. Takes out five. The one four seven nine ten. Piece of wood could help him. He's got to catch the head pin. Got oh, him yes. All. Very nicely done. Spare in the fifth. Trying to protect that nine pin advantage. Bill, he'll get seven. That's the three, the six, and the seven remaining. Wood uh, in between. And try to split the three and the six. That's and it. uses the wood effectively as well. Three spares over six boxes for Steve. Four total, and you throw in the strike. It's a 16-pin advantage through five. Both bowlers with marks. Of course, Mike has the big one to strike. I'm sure he's thinking about a double. Now, again, same three pins he left last time on lane 35. Pull the ball to the right.
Gives them 83 through 7. Uh, the foundation frame, the eighth frame. The way the match is right now, Mike really needs to put a mark up. Another strike? No, this time a nine pin drop. One pin away from a crucial mark here in the eighth. Went by it to the left. You know, that's the only way he could have missed that. He missed it to the right. That piece of wood would have swung around and took it down from behind. Gets all 10, but uh, one ball too late for his liking. <laughs> all right, 16 pin advantage through five. So Mike had to spare seven. So to maintain that 16 pin advantage, Steve needs at least seven on this spare. But he faces two open frames. He could take control of the match right here. Takes a big step in that direction with a nine fill. I almost played the wood far left on the red line. Nope. Just powered it right straight through. Bonus money, three in a row for Steve. Three spares, five, six, seven. Total of five marks through seven boxes. He's having a real good game. Can add more to his bonus uh, total with another mark. Six down, four remain. The five, three. Six and ten. Let's see if we can do something with that wood. Yeah, tried to get it moving. He's going to have a comfortable lead going into the final two. If there is such a thing. <laughs> Up to 117, so the lead is 24 pins with two boxes remaining. So Mike is in a double strike situation. Going to need some strikes. Six to fall. Leaves the two, the four, six, and ten. No, that's, a, that's a foul. That's a foul. It's a footfall on that. He tripped the light, so it's a six box. Just six, and that hurts. Yeah, it really does. Get a strike here in the tenth. It's going to be Steve Badney advancing. He will meet Phil Clough. Mike putting up a spare, getting one extra ball coming up to add to his total. Needs at least eight to technically still be alive, but. It will be Steve moving on. Gets all 10, getting hot, but uh, a little too late for Mike. 119, 117, up by two pins at the moment, but uh, Steve will step in and change that. Yeah, I'm sure Mike's gonna look back on, uh, I think his seventh frame, missed the four pin, that single pin. And of course he converted that tough spare in the ninth, but foot fouled take those back and Steve might need a mark this final two but right now he's in cruise control that that does it right there I believe seven in the frame that two-game championship match coming up. Steve, Phil. Final frame for Steve Vadding here in the challengers round. 
And the last ball coming up. So the Vadnay rooting section gets to see their guy bowl a little bit more. He's on to the championship to go off with the Bill Clough as he takes it by 15 minutes over Mike Poland. Back with the championship after this. Our championship match is all set and we're ready to roll. Steve Vadnay and the reigning champ Phil Clough looking to make it two in a row here on the Candlefoot Challenge. Glad you're with us. Steve, uh, as the challenger, goes second in the first of two games as the champ steps in from Warren, Massachusetts. Just three fall for Phil with that first ball. Unbeknownst to me, Phil grew up in the same hometown as myself, Palmer, Massachusetts. I know that excites everybody, but no, it's, it's a little tidbit. You know, it's, it's like there's the people at home saying, "Wow, I didn't know that." Imagine, I mean, two Imagine that? two elite <laughs> bowlers from the same <laughs> town. What are the chances? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, he wants one of those to go. Leaves himself the four and the ten. Is there an athletic hall of fame in Palmer? And or, or no, it probably should be now. <laughs> <laughs> but certainly. Looks like he may go right at the four. Maybe this wood is enough to kick around in the ten or, or no, not quite. On a uh, just slightly related note, when I was driving back to college in the early 90s, I broke down on the Mass Pike and had my car towed to Palmer, and they put in a new transmission for me. Really? That, that failed me a couple months later. <laughs> we were, we were, we were yeah, <laughs> we're noted for that. <laughs> I think I get scammed because I was a college kid who needed a, you know, a, a rebuilt transmission, and they sold me one, and boy, they, they certainly sold it to me. <laughs> so Phil is open, and Steve gets his first crack in the championship game one. Ouch, that was buried in the 1-3 pocket. And he leaves himself the 5 pin, and then the back row 7, 8, and 10. And no play of a wood. Yeah. Match is denied from Phil. Quiet start so far. No marks. Again. Well, you would think the wood would take the 10 pin. However, because of the angle, and it's so far deep, I'm, I'm a little worried. Yeah. Only the five. Looking to match the 10 to keep pace with Phil. Mission accomplished, nine and a 10 for Steve. Total of 19, these bowlers even after two. Cool. Two, four, seven on the left, six, 10 on the right for Phil. And again, no help. We're gonna try to split the two and the four. Uh, I remember Jeff Surrett cutting the two into the 6-10. One of those final weeks. He's on another planet with his game. Yeah, just like that. Nice try. Good nine box. I believe Phil last week left three, maybe four pins standing in the championship match. He, he pins very well. Four down, six remain for Phil. Of course, now that I said that, <laughs> come on, Phil, work this out. Get yeah, a mark or a nine or a ten. He's in a tough spot here. <laughs> now one ball left to tackle those four remaining pins. Nine 
nine total. Not bad. He'll take that. Three nines in the ten. Still looking for a mark, but he's at 37 through four. Steve Fox three. This time he takes the Brooklyn side. The one two pocket result is everything but the six pin. Got a clear shot at it now. Spare in the third. Our first mark of this game goes to Steve Adney. On the head pin, the result is just four on the spare. Gives him 33 through three. So not the fill he wanted, but he will take the lead over Phil. Total of nine gets him up to 42, and that's good for a five pin advantage. Early on in this two game championship match, Coming up between the games one and two. We will have our strike challenge. Remember the audience bowling for $500 if they can get a strike. Phil has that distinct style where he goes down very low and his uh, knee often touches the floor. Gets all ten, no marks, but has left only three up through the first five. Tony D'Amico is our strike challenger. Chosen uh, from entrance uh, from our viewing audience here. Are those in attendance from Melrose Mass, he'll bowl for the 500. Still... Bill is still going to be open through six frames now. Another 10, though. No disastrous frames, but uh, no marks yet either. 57 through six. All 10 for Steve, and he's starting to feel it, perhaps. Well, it's a matter of time. He's been burying the ball, one, two, one, three, one, three, and not getting much to shoot at. That time, the pinch, as you saw, the replay just exploded for him. Strike in the fifth, leading by five plus these two balls. Off target with that one. That got him just three. First half of the fill. That Seven the more. Rest of them. <laughs> Spare on strike, two in a row, and Steve now has three marks over the last four. Take a look at the replay. Steve Badney looking to knock off Phil Clough, the reigning champ. Back with the finish to game one after this on Comcast Sportsnet. We are back in Woburn. Glad you're with us to watch him Candlepin bowling. The best in New England. You can send your comments to boldcandlepin.com uh, as we've extended our reach on the Comcast Sportsnet and the Comcast Network. We look forward to your feedback. Want to know where you're watching, what you like about the show, and uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. That's right. Uh, and what media you're using to watch Sportsnet on, that would be helpful too. Comcast Sportsnet and the Comcast Network, home to the Candlepin Challenge. Go to that website, bullcandlepin.com, the ICBA website, and uh, there'll be a way for you to provide some feedback. Look forward to hearing from you. I believe it's candlepinbowling.com. But that was, a, was that what it was? That, that said bullcandlepin.com. I think it's candlepinbowling.com.
Phil drops six. Still looking to break through for that first mark. Oh boy, ball jumped right past the two pin, uh, the four pin. It's either a nine or a ten. That's been the score for Phil. Three tens, five nines through eight tell his story. He's up to 75. Nothing less than a nine. However, he needs marks at this point. Steve Vadney, 72 plus this ball in a spare. And a chance for $50. Yes, sir. And there it is. Two spares and two strikes now for Steve, three in a row. As he works into the eighth. Nine in the fill, oh, wanted oh. that seven to go and it did, so he's left with just a single pin. Almost a double strike, but this is another $50 shot if he can corral the three pin, make it four in a row. Yes. Extending that lead rather significantly. Now up to 37 and counting through eight boxes of game one, 112 to 75. Back to Phil. And leave the one seven. And there's the mark he's been waiting on. Comes in the ninth. And you see the replay, the one in the seven pins. As John said, his first mark needs a big fill and another one. Give a little confidence going to that next game. Unfortunately, he's just going to get four. One final ball to take out that one last pin. It would get him to uh, 99 if he can make it happen. 98 for Phil. How big will Steve's lead be heading into the second game? Two boxes to find out. The four marks in a row looking for his fifth straight. Coming off a spare in the eighth. Left with the six, seven, nine. Of course, this would be worth fifty dollars if you convert. Just like the ten pin was up, you want to be on the right side of that six pin. Oh, almost, almost converted that one. He's going to have a hefty lead. At 129 with the, a box still to go. The three, four, six, seven left for Steve Vadney, who will be in uh, tremendous shape heading into that second game. Finishes with five marks for the game, but at four in a row, frames five through eight. And that is propelling him to a gigantic lead. Adds eight more here in this 10th box and leads by 39 over Phil Clough, 137 to 98. Up next, it's the strike challenge when we come back. Welcome back, everybody. It's time for the strike challenge, and today we've got Tony Demeco again. Yeah, for the third time. For the third time, That's and Tony, five. how much did you win last time? Ten, uh, ten dollars the first time, ten dollars the second time. Let's hope five hundred this time. Let's hope five hundred <laughs> this time. Best of luck to you, Tony. Thank you. Right. Good luck to Tony as he bowls for the five hundred. Needs a strike to do it.
test the approach. This is important. 500 on the line. Hey, this looks chance. good. Oh, this way. Oh, almost. This was $500, Richard. A chance for a spare, though. Three six left. A lot of concentration there. Got it. Yes, and he knew it. 50 bucks. <laughs> well done for Tony. He's got some skills as a Candleton bowler. He does. He tucks his shirt in. I like that. A neat <laughs> look. That's what did it for him. <laughs> Back to Steve Vadney and Phil Clough. Steve the uh, challenger, but in control of 39 pins and set to go first in the second and final game. Gets seven goes, leaving only the six. Can he open with a mark and turn up the heat even further on Phil Clough? Yes. Yes, sir. His rooting section has had uh, plenty to cheer about today. A lot of his buddies from uh, New Hampshire making the trip in. <laughs> Cluster of four left up. Three of the five, uh, the six and the nine. Got him. Two in a row to open this game. You can put it on the board. Yes. That's the chant from his supporters. Phil's got a lot of work to do and only 10 boxes to do it. Well, he leaves himself to two in the eight. Those are the two pins you take out for half Whistler left, but he's got the wood in between. Should help. Oh, he's got to hurry. The ball wants to break right to left, so he really has to get underneath it. Get that good lift to make it break the way he wants to. Time he left it out to the right, picked it up for the 10. Horseman left in the nine, the back row. That close. Two tens. That's no surprise from Phil. It's a habit of uh, pinning well, but needs more marks and quickly. Speaking of Mark, Steve looking for his third in a row. It'd be bonus money. Two spares, box one, box two. Five up, five down. Well, the wood seems to be pos positioned uh, in his favor. Going after the two pin, wood in the back, has a chance to take out the ten. Nope. So this streak will stop at two marks in a row. He continues to build his lead. Takes out eight. Got that three to slide over a little bit, but it stayed up. So it's the three and the ten. Yes. Three spares. One, two, and four for Steve. Gives him eight marks in 14 frames. Box three for Phil. Takes out eight. He's got the six and the nine remaining. A problem with that wood out front. He's going to try to get by that wood, catch the six pin clean. No. Nope. 
10 bucks. We heard that before. Consistency. No question about that. His trouble today is with that first ball. He hasn't been on the head pin as much as he would like to be. To give himself some legitimate spare leaves. Take a little something extra to convert the 10 bucks in this case. <laughs> it's an eight. Fifth box for Steve. Strike on spare. Was that a quick one? Boy, is he in a groove. Slow motion here. Well, he like fast motion. Strike on spare. Sets himself up for another bonus of $50 if he can manage to get another spare or strike here in the sixth. He'll leave the 2, 4, 7, 3, 6, 10 spread eagle. This will be a tough one to convert. Gave it a good run. Eighty eight through six in this game, second of a two. Three up. The three, the four, the six. A nine for Phil. Forty seven through five. Even now, when he puts the ball in the pocket, he's just not carrying that extra pin. So look at a single pin left. That's the 10. Phil up to 57 in this game, but it does not appear he will have a chance to catch up down the stretch. We'll back with the finish after this. Welcome back. We want to remind you and invite you to join us for our next taping, March 1st, 9 a.m. here in Woburn, and it's a special show. That's right. We bring the ladies back for four weeks, and uh, we should come down about 9 o'clock we start. We've taped four shows of the ladies. And uh, it was exciting last year, and we look forward to the same this year. So join us on the 1st of March. Steve Vadne now in his seventh frame, up by 70 pins, so very much in a safe position. See an Isaac Championship win this week. Drops a half dozen. Looking at the two, four, five, seven remaining. Oh boy, looked like he had that converted all the way down, but left the seven pin. Back to back 10 boxes for Steve. He moves to 98 in this game. out 
three. Steve joining us from Claremont, New Hampshire. Looks like he'll be back with us again next week. So Clough's run likely to last just a week. Here's Phil in the seventh. Eight down, two remain. Three and the six. Signature 10 box. Well, chill chance for bonus money for Phil. Put some marks together. You'd think he'd be due. You no, know, just that first ball is. Final two frames coming up for these two to make it official. Steve's at 244 total right now. Left with the uh, two and the eight. at 17, 117 through nine. Final ball coming up for Steve to get to his uh, total for the championship round. <laughs> Finishes rather quietly, open over the final five, but he's going to have plenty to get the win thanks to his strong game one and a terrific start to the second game with four marks over the first half. Three and the five left for Phil here in the ninth. Got him. He deserved that a long time ago. Seven and the ten up with that wood to the right. Good effort there. Steve Vadney, the champion this week. Solid 262 gives him a 60 pin victory over Phil Clough. 262 to 202. We are back to wrap it up after this on the Candleton Challenge. Welcome back to Woburn for the wrap-up and the Hall of Famer Steve Badney is our champ this week. That's right. Uh, he had a pretty easy time of it. He got that lead and just never looked back and Phil just didn't bring his A game today. Had a tough time. We'll uh, speak with Steve in just a second, but first the runner-up standing by with Trina. Trina? Thanks a lot, John. Well, Mike, we'll come straight to you. Not quite the welcome you wanted back again, having been gone for four years. 
Well, it is what it is. Uh, Steve Bowe, well, and I missed the headpin too many times, so it is. The ball was working, too. I just had to get it there, but I couldn't. Well, I loved what you just said. You said it's a good day when nothing hurts. That's right. Everything goes <laughs> great. No excuses. $150 for you from the ICBA. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Welcome back. And Phil, one week as our champ. Not quite what you wanted today, I'm sure. No, it wasn't, but uh, I, I got what I deserved. I was missing the headpin too much. Oh, well, I don't know about what you deserved. You had a lot of splits out there, just not quite your day. $200 for you, though, Phil, from the ICBA. Congratulations on that. Thank, thank you very much. All right. Hopefully we'll see you both back again soon. Back over to you, thank John. You. Back with the Hall of Famer, Steve. Uh, well done for a while. You were really cruising there in that first game and early in the, in the second game. Yeah, and then I got a little heavy on the headband and started getting some splits. But, you know, fortunately, uh, I had enough pins ahead of time to wave, wave the storm, you know. Did the uh, top three ever enter in your mind? It has, and uh, I don't know what the third, third uh, total was. And all I wanted um, to do was go about 280, anyways, and uh, that would have got it. Happen. That would have got it. I think so. I think it's 278. 278. <laughs> well, perhaps next week. Good luck. I hope so. Thank we'll you. see Steve back then, and uh, you too. We hope right here on the uh, Can Open Challenge. See you next week.